Hello, welcome again to another Dave's Desk. Today I'm interviewing again a great friend of mine from the speaking, coaching and training world, Mark Wingfield. Mark is an specialist in helping people with fears and anxieties. He's for many years helped people with uh, what, what I suppose you would call it self-defense and anti-bullying, helping people to calm and relieve stress and anxiety. He's a speaker, a coach, trainer and facilitator. Um, and Mark, just before we kick off, hello. And how can people get in touch with you? Good morning, Dave. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, if they want to get in touch with me, I go under the Twitter name of the Mad Max Man. I also have an Instagram account, which is Max Train Develop. Yep. And I'm on LinkedIn. I'm also on Facebook. So any of those, uh, whichever is your particular poison. So, uh, yes, thank you very much indeed. Terrific. And and maybe he'll allude to it later, but just in case he doesn't, the Mad Max Man is a very real thing <laughs> and it needs to be seen and experienced to be believed. Um, so, Mark, tell us a little bit about your specialism in helping people with fear, anxieties, you know, how, and how do you even know this stuff works, mate? Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Dave. Well, um, I got into this in a quite a strange way. I... I'm a usual business bloke. I've done a lot of training in my time, uh, but I've always had a passion for martial arts. So ever since I was 17 years old. Right. And um, when I set up my own business in 2006, I did a contract for somebody I used to work for. And knowing this was a short term thing, I thought, oh, what else can I do? And I thought, oh, maybe my martial arts team building, that'd be great. And I thought, everybody want to fight, you know, as a team building activity. No, no. There are some people that do want to do that. And it's great fun. But actually, um, that set me along the road of thinking, well, actually, maybe there's a more practical purpose. And as time's involved from 2006 to where we are in 2021 now, I now work with a lot of schools, colleges, universities, but also a lot of businesses, uh, frontline staff, helping them deal with nasty stuff. And that could be... Confrontation stuff. Yeah, it's around confrontation, aggression, the potential for violence. Um, But it doesn't have to be. Uh, I also work... And bizarrely, I've become a trauma therapist as well, which uh, I didn't set out to do in any shape or form in the first place. But your question about uh, does this work? Uh, Well, on that particular side, which is something called havening techniques. Yes, you heard right. Havening, as in a safe haven, not havering in Essex, nothing to do with havering. It's all about having a, um, a safe haven to go to. And it's proven with two independent studies, one by King's College London, one uh, done in Cardiff, um, which is that it actually works. Even one one application works. In fact, I was, I was actually, funnily enough, I was doing a podcast yesterday evening and the gentleman who interviewed me, he had a problem with um, uh, wasps because he, he got stung in the eye when he was 16 years old on the way home from school. And uh, within two minutes of a- applying the techniques, wow. he went from a, a seven out of 10, that's really horrible, to a three out of 10. So even in a couple of minutes, it doesn't always work like that, but it works. I've been doing it since 2014. Uh, so I've been doing it nearly seven years now and it, it's fantastic. Uh, so that's part of what I do and uh, sort of what blends in with other stuff. How did you get into it? Uh, I got into it because the stuff that I do, which is the scary stuff, which is intimidating people under pressure, they're fully supported at the same time. So they're, they're look, well looked after, but um, some people can't do that because they are too frightened or they're, don't want to show they can be weak. You know, they're kind of, hey, I'm a big guy. We, we all have our fears and anxieties. Anyway, some people don't want to show that in front of other people. And we typically have a group activity where I'll be coming up to people going, yeah, horrible stuff. And, um, and they wouldn't like it because I would, with their permission, say anything to them. So your train is a rubbish, mate. Through to I'd lose all the sleep in the world if I had to count your spots in my dreams. You know, not not very nice stuff anyway, and much worse than that, using much worse language. Anyway, we won't get won't get to that right now. But anyway, a lot of people found that, um, or some people found that difficult to access. And somebody who knows me quite well said, uh, you ought to get into havering. No, havening. <laughs> anyway, get away. tried to fool me in the first place. <laughs> yeah, get there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, I, I said, well, what on earth is that? And... Then I spoke to um, a mutual friend of ours, Tony, who uh, who said, uh, yeah, I thought it was a bit weird and wacky and I didn't believe anything. It was too good to be true. You don't have to talk about it. And um, it's all can be instantaneous and it's permanent. Nah. Oh, and there's some touch involved. That's even more weird. Anyway, 
it's fantastic and um so it it, it works really well and it's um just it's not for everything but it, it works fantastically well and, and very easy to apply so um, I, I can see i can practically see how this could help with people in business walking to and from work to their car or walking home from the train station uh, receptionists or peak public facing people uh, even teachers dealing with parents or, yes. or aggressive students or even students who dread that walk to or from school or you know yeah. the bully at lunchtime in the corridor so that that's that's yeah, that's how you know it works and how on earth you got into it. Why did you get into it? Uh, well, the reason I got into the, the hailing stuff was because of, um, you know, the single person. This is a one to one treatment normally, although I do groups as well. I've been working with schools over the lockdown, for example, do, delivering events online. So whole groups have been calmed down from their fears about anxiety, uh, fears about exams, for example, missing boyfriend, girlfriend never having boyfriend, girlfriend, all this, you know, whatever that was preoccupying them, worrying about people who are having COVID or people who have passed away with bereavement issues and all sorts of different things. So it has so many applications. But um, I'm a little guy. You can't really see this from the video, but I'm quite a little guy. And I'm one of three brothers, both of whom are much bigger than me. And I had to kind of stand up for myself in my family. So I think that's where it started. Right. And then because I'm a, because I'm a little guy, I got picked on occasionally at school and... I wasn't having it. Um, so I, I did a talk some years ago, which was all about something called jungle treatment, where people would circle you and uh, they would come in and close, that, close you down, knock you to the ground, pick your nose and you had to breathe through your mouth and stuff grass in it. It wasn't any worse than that, but not very nice. And I thought, no, it's not happening to me. And I did something which was wrong on the day because I put my fists up. You don't want to do that because that shows aggression. Um, but I did that because I didn't know any better. And I said, you know, something along the lines of, uh, can't take you all on. First one that touches me, I'll break you. And you know, kind of the words that uh, follow from you. Right your glasses, yeah. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and amazingly and pleasingly, uh, nobody was the first to, uh, to step forward and they all melted away. And I, I now show people how to do that in a much more effective way, which is doing that which is called a fence. Right. Uh, people don't like getting too close <laughs> to their hands. Come on. Let's get busy. Show, show me something. Show show me, because you've talked about two things, helping mm. confrontation and having it. So I, I, we're limited for time, but can you show yep. me, Can you show us, and we'll have, I, I'll have a go as well, just to show you I'm not afraid. All right. I'm okay. Well, anything. nobody likes getting close to the hands. So you put your hand about an arm's length away from your body. The other hand is kind of back... Um, Ideally near your uh, near your waist, but you can't really see that in the video, so I'll make it a little bit higher. And um, and that is, you know, that's like a, an invisible fence in front of you and the others. And people know that you can do that sort of thing. You can do all sorts of stuff from there. So your hands are there to attack if you had to, but that's really last resort. But it's also to defend, so you can do all sorts of things from here. And just doing that, or even that, because we all know that that means stop, doesn't it? Yeah. But if you say back away. At the same time, and do you then, say it, do you shout it? I mean, I suppose it depends on the situation. Yeah, it depends on the situation. You can start off with "just leave me alone, please," in a normal tone. Leave me alone. Term. So after back three, away. if I go, if I ask you to say "back away" after three, all right, in the start. So one, two, three, back away. Okay. All right. So that's your starting point, or just just leave me alone. I'm not bothered. And then you can disappear. You don't have to hang around. You're in control. Remember. So anyway, that's a really, really um, good start. And you need to you learn how to use that under pressure, which is why we have the, the intimidations one-on-one -on -one and, you know, that gets a bit hairy. But um, but you really learn how to do that effectively. Havening is a little bit more, um, I take a little bit more time to explain, but essentially what you have to do to start with is you think about the thing that makes you feel uncomfortable. Okay. And that can be anything. You have to actually bring it to mind. You don't have, you have to, to bring it to mind. That's really important. You have to feel the feeling. So... You don't kid yourself, you actually feel, you know, take the guy last night who had the wasp thing. He imagined himself being stung again and how awful that was and how painful and how much he thinks about bees and wasps and thinks, oh, that's just horrible. And it might be dogs for somebody else. It might be cats. It could be walking down the street. It could be going to that board meeting. It could be standing up and presenting in front of people. Whatever makes you fearful, you feel the fear effectively and how it makes you feel. So we get people to shut their eyes often sort of, immerse themselves in thinking about what it is uh, and you, you spend about half a minute doing that okay. so if we've got half a minute we've got half a minute to do that got half a minute all right so 
we'll time that now. So, um, okay, so I'd like you to just think about how it makes you feel. Whatever it is, whatever's private to you, and I'll shut up now, just immerse your eye, uh, close your eyes, immerse yourself in whatever it is that concerns you. Really bring it to mind. There might have been sights, sounds, smells, something else going on around you. Imagine that you're there at the time if it was an event that happened before. Okay, and now you clear your mind and you think, okay, what did I have for tea two nights ago? What did you have for tea two nights ago, Dave? Uh, it was a roast pork dinner. Oh, lovely. With gravy? Of course. Okay. Of it, yeah. All right, lovely. If you can indulge me, put your right hand on your left shoulder and your left hand on your right shoulder. And just gently, about the pace I'm doing it, just gently stroke down to your fingers. And I want you to imagine, Dave, that you are in a place that you love to be. Let's say it's a, a lovely sandy beach and you're walking along and the waves are lapping at the shore. Imagine that you're there and every step that you're taking, you are feeling a little bit lighter, a little bit more comfortable. And as you walk along, you come to a set of steps, which is kind of really bizarre. Why do they have steps in the middle of the beach? But you look up to the top of the steps and the top of the steps, you've got Liz and George waiting to give you the most wonderful hug you have ever had in your life. That's my wife and son for anyone who don't know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so you look up in your mind's eye at the top of the steps. You've got 15 steps to go up and you step onto the first step and immediately you feel a little bit lighter, you feel a little bit more comfortable. And then onto the second step and you start to enjoy yourself now, feeling a lot better. And then onto the third step, and you're feeling more and more content. And then onto the fourth step, those worries are just falling off your shoulders. You're feeling incredible, really good. And then onto the fifth step, you're feeling fabulous, really brilliant. And then onto the sixth step, and you're starting to really relax now, really enjoy yourself. And onto the seventh step, and you're feeling wonderful, wonderful like never before. Onto the eighth step, and nothing is going to stop you now. Absolutely nothing. And onto the ninth step, you're feeling the best you have ever felt in your life. These steps are wonderful. And onto the tenth step, you're calm and feeling a satisfaction inside is growing and growing. And then onto the eleventh step, you've got a smile from ear to ear. You just can't contain the joy inside. And then onto the twelfth step, you bounce onto that with huge delight. The thirteenth step, you've got this brilliant feeling wants to burst out inside of you. Onto the 14th step, you're dancing on a cloud and you open your arms to embrace Liz and George or whoever is at the top of your steps and you feel wonderful. Now, what I should have done at the beginning is said, think of what it is and give yourself a number out of 10. And that number should have reduced by now. So, yeah, I feel great. It's, it's <laughs> as simple as that. So some of you out there who, who are watching this might be feeling, oh, I feel a bit tired which is the delta waves that you don't know it's when you do this because you normally experience that in deep sleep. But don't worry, you'll come back to life any moment now. So um, anyway, so that's a very, very brief um, demonstration. Hayden. If you want to come along and have another go, there's a free session eight o'clock on a Sunday evening. So just go onto my website, maxconflictmanagement.com and find the Eventbrite link. And uh, you can come onto that free if you are a key worker, which any, any uh, teachers are. Um, or for a contact of mine. Now, if you're not a contact of mine, just connect with me on LinkedIn, follow me on Twitter, then you become a contact of mine. So it's free. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, I'll be with you can... removing anxiety, you work one-to-one -one or with large groups. Um, Mark, so generous. Thank you for your time. Thank you for those... Pleasure. Sure. Love you because it was really practical and useful as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks for your time, my friend. And uh, anyway, one little thing, very quickly, last sentence, I'll leave you to finish. What's the one thing if people do every single day that will make the biggest difference here? I think if you self-haven, you can do what we've just done. You can do it to yourself. And there is nothing you can't reduce your emotional anxiety over. Nothing. Well, so um, you might feel as in you're, you're in a bit of a hole or you've got a real big problem. Um, I can't guarantee it'll go away, but I can guarantee it'll, it'll reduce to some extent. And if you go to a specialist who knows what they're doing, they may be able to take it away completely. So um, wherever you are right now, it's not the end. It's the beginning of the rest of your life. Thank you very much, Mark. See you soon all on another Dave's desk. Thanks, Dave. 
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos. Then click the TV to watch the next video. Oh, and don't forget to visit our website at davidheiner.com to claim your free audiobook. Until the next time, go Rhino. Have in it.